it's indeed a pleasure for me to be able to welcome all of you fellow champions of inclusion and empowerment welcome to the round table and uh, as part of zero uh, fm we are honored to have all of you here uh, and uh, as uh, meena has said at the beginning the theme of our discussion is inspiring inclusion empowering women through investment to accelerate progress this proposes to strike at the heart of what we aim to achieve we understand uh, that true progress requires more than just words it demands intentional investment in resources in support systems and most importantly in belief so before before i uh, say thank you and step off uh, i would like all of you to take a moment to reflect on the profound words of maya angelo who said each time a woman stands up for herself she stands up for all women today as we stand together in solidarity let us pledge to stand not only for ourselves but for every woman whose voice has been silenced and whose potential has been overlooked thank you all uh, for being here and mina over to you thank you parto those words were so profound and indeed uh, takes us back to the place where we all started from so uh, let me just introduce rinku um hr director at oracle and uh, jump into the first question for him which is you know what are the barriers alex you see that women are facing and how do they really overcome these barriers to thrive in society your views Th thank you so um or oh, see the good thing about being in a panel where i am the only guy or the male <laughs> it is now i get to feel uh, first hand how does it feel to be in a board full of men and uh, there is only one woman so uh, you know already i have gone through the entire cycle uh, diversity equity inclusion belongingness and now i am somewhere at that intersectionality point there so uh, th th that is to just to set the context then coming to i just want to start a, with a piece of humor why i'd like to take that limitation or barriers this because once you have that opposites you know what exactly to do to reach your end point or the outcome like there was a guy who was uh, quite uh, he was a heavy weight not in the emotional sense but uh, more from the physical sense he goes to a bookshop he asks the book uh, shop owner Uh, can i have a book to lose the weight and and he says all the books are sold out maybe it's around january you know when everybody has that uh, new year resolution he said all books are sold out uh, but i can give you how to gain weight and the guy who is already overweight he, he don't insult me uh, you know what are you joking you know i need i will wait maybe after two months when the book comes i'll come then the sh shopkeeper says hey buddy i have been running the shop for uh, Uh, two decades now read this book how to gain weight and do exactly the opposite you will you will lose weight if not uh, you know uh, the uh, i'll give you the book free of cost if uh, it doesn't work out so that is the way what why i am looking at uh, this particular question why i had to choose because see if you look at uh, fortune 500 ceos this year we have the maximum number of uh, ceos in the 50s still it should have been the number should have been 250 instead of 50 we we have uh, if you look at uh, the it uh, space 28% women workforce last 20 years it's almost stagnant not moving the needle to a 30% if you look at in india uh, the members of parliament 542 members in lok sabha 78 are women or rajya sabha where it is nomination it even shows the intent 24 out of 224 rajya sabha members are women so you know the state of the nation uh, but numbers have been increasing especially in the stem area uh, but uh, the number of workers are still limited so i do not know because i want to leave, leave you all when i finish those 5 6 minutes you know with some thought provoking stuff 
uh, so are we catering to the wedding market or the workplace market because the numbers are increasing but that's not showing up and uh, since meena started with some quote i also cannot resist i would say uh, want to quote uh, peter drucker where he says culture eats strategy for breakfast i would say even for lunch and dinner i will not stop there so um, because we we have many uh, one of the limitation is the tick in the box approach everybody wants to show oh i got an award for diversity i want to stop at diversity uh, just by showing some numbers but are we creating or going beyond uh, numbers or compliance so that is where equity uh, i talked about intersectionality uh, some of you might be hearing the word for the first time uh, that is where we combine at least two parameters together like a differently colored uh, women so there is a gender aspect there is a race aspect and the person can be from um, you know a different part of the country which is not uh, a, a metro city or something that's a third factor fourth is the person is differently abled fifth can be a veteran can you imagine a five in one person so can we move beyond that so that is where we need to imbibe a culture which has to be holistic can we create social accountability because society and culture is where it all starts i cannot uh, delegate or outsource my uh, ethics and conscience to the company but can we start at home at ourselves where we truly look at diversity as a core value of our dna and then come to the company uh, that is one part and i will end with this real life story also on how i will tell you uh, what really happened uh, when you follow the tick tick box approach because most of us in hr uh, we have the 2d approach the 3d approach is uh, uh, diagnostic design delivery the 2d approach is diwali dhamaka so i have something huge coming up and uh, uh, mothers day um, uh, you know women's day all the other time women are not being treated equally 364 days versus that one single day is that enough that is something we need to ponder and in introspect is it just a buzzword or um, you know do we want to really have a change management framework yeah that is the first aspect can we look at uh, dib holistically number 2 Uh, can we move out of hr as the only accountable person because it has to come at the c level at uh, the grassroots level it is not hr alone who is responsible so uh, uh, that's the second part third is can we focus on the problem uh, you know now we are focusing on the problem but can we look at the opportunity when we look at positively i think we can Uh, move or shift the uh, baseline much more than when we take it as a, a problem the fourth one should be can we think of diversity as a mosaic rather than a melting pot today everybody wants see that is why that is why i am maybe the only male speaker in a women leader uh, this thing but i am uh, you know i am an evangelist uh, for uh, this thing i will even tell you i was part of an icc um a com a committee and uh, icc is predominantly women and there was a situation where uh, a, a male employee misbehaved and i was surprised i was the only person in that committee uh, to uh, uh, you know kind of deliberate and tell the employee has been term should be terminated where all the other members who were women said okay uh, give him one chance he's a youngster uh sometimes mistakes do happen etc etc so um it, so it is not the gender but do you have those right allies do you have the right mindset do you create psychological safety uh, do, um, can you bring your true selves to work so that is where i create the belongingness belongingness is a feeling it's an emotion i i cannot do a tick in the box yeah i belong now or you Wonderful. now 
I One have to think myself that uh, I or somebody else belong. And Wonderful. Yes. I think uh, we've got some great takeaways of, um, you know, beyond compliance, intersectionality, um, consistency, and mosaic versus melting pot that, that you've so beautifully captured. Thank you for those insights. And uh, while we move to the second question, it's my privilege to be introducing Kopal Sarin, who is the uh, head of IT for Wabtech and the India CIO, such a beautiful position of power that she holds. And I know Kopal, and she brings in some amazing perspectives. So Kopal, inviting you, um, carrying on from Alex in terms of the need for it not to be a checkbox. Uh, what in your experience has been uh, opportunities for you to break down barriers? Uh, how do we become more inclusive at the workplace, particularly in the technology space? And how do we create opportunities for women uh, to become more holistic and to get them opportunities to where they belong? Good morning, everyone. Privileged to be on this panel. Uh, you know, uh, the, while Sir Alex was talking as well, this whole element of things starting from home and we are at this intersection point was, uh, you know, where I was thinking of uh, and what occurred to me, you know, very recently at WAPTEC, since we've come together as three different uh, legacy or, uh, organizations as GE Transportation, Favely and Legacy WAPTEC kind of came together and we relaunched our vision and mission statement. Uh, on the vision side, uh, you know, we put uh, things like one web tech because we wanted to make sure that people look at each other collectively, collaboratively, et cetera, and, and you know, the synergies come in. And then we put, uh, you know, expanding uh, the, the possibilities and uh, then we put people first. Uh, and then we put something around the rail transportation technology mission and things like that. Right um, now, everybody started questioning where is the focus on customer on this one? Uh, where is the focus on women, employees, etc.? You know, and it, very simply, we explained that we put people first: supplier as a person, customer as a person, employee as a person. Dealing with people as people first, right? I mean, to the extent that we silo, uh, you know, everybody into these buckets and we forget the basic humanity humane interactions that need to happen, which allow for a very safe uh, environment, respectful environment as well, so that, you know, you, the way you treat your supplier, your customer, your uh, co, um, um, you know, peers in the environment as well, they are people first, right? I think so from there onwards itself, the making sure that everybody feels included Everybody feels they have a role to play. They have, they do understand the larger picture. And, uh, you know, I keep saying this, so we uh, manufacture a lot of things, let's say for Bande Bharat trains, right? And uh, the, the guy who's doing the networking in my plant is impacting that rail uh, Bande Bharat train as well, right? And if they understand that piece, they feel really good about it as well right so similarly making sure everybody understand as people what impact they create is a is a large journey that we are working towards at this time and we are very emphatic uh, about this when we speak about in different forums as well that first safe psychological uh, impact should be that they feel good in our environment respected in our environment uh, which allows them to speak and uh, in terms of breaking these barriers, um, you know, we do a lot of things, of course, in terms of the, all the employee resource groups that we have and what is the diverse representation on those groups as well, rather than just creating those groups. And, you know, you, ha you typically will see in the organization also people, uh, you know, who raise their hands are the ones who are getting their projects done. It's, you see the similar faces on different employee resources groups as well, right? So can we make sure the people who are not, um, you know, speaking up as much or do not, you know, who, who don't seem so part participative, can we include them in these groups as well? So this is something that I have personally driven as well to ensure that 
we get the representation and voice of the different indiv individuals from different areas, different uh, thought processes, etc. Now, to make sure that you know, when we've got opinions, we have make we have heard the voice from different people again. Uh, we, of course, do things like a pulse survey and things like that to see what if they are feeling okay or not. We do also bring in today, you know, as a CIO, um, you know, we bring in a lot of these bots that do a lot of employee engagement uh, issues mm -hmm. and surveys, which is just checking around your service anniversary or, or, you know, when you've got a promotion or when you've shifted your teams or if you've got a new manager, how are you feeling, right? So I think even that has thrown up some areas of improvement or we've th through our blind spots which we've not realized um, you know especially as senior management we we feel that if we talk about it the, the the rest is happening but sometimes that communication is quite different when it goes down right so do the floor walks that we we try and do as well so that people a feel that we are walking the talk we are we believe in what we are signing up to we are accessible as well beyond the rest of the structure in the organization is extremely important. Uh, and I think some of those things have helped me in my um, journey. And, in, and I'm really uh, proud to say that our uh, current environment and I've been fortunate to work in environments where women have been encouraged. And to the extent of, uh, you know, uh, Women's Day not being a separate special day just for mm -hmm. women, because, you know, initially we would always have these uh, conversations or, hey, when is Men's Day going to happen as well? I think it works both ways for these women ERG groups to include men in that group as well. As well. Uh, like Alex was saying, it's, it's good to see him as an evangelist for the space, you know, be part of that group. And we, it's, it's interesting that a lot of men folk have raised their hands to be part of this as well. So Lovely. that emphasize that, uh, you know, this journey is a partnership and it's Absolutely. not, you know, the ball on one side of the court and then it goes to the other Absolutely. side of the court. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I think that's some of my experiences that I just Wonderful. wanted to share. Wonderful, Kopal. I think uh, brilliant insights and uh, three things that stood out was the amount of effort Vaptec is probably taking to make sure that people feel included. Um, the the establishment of ERG, where senior leaders like you are walking the talk and making sure that there is representation. And uh, thirdly, the kind of ongoing connect. As an OD practitioner, I know that is the key to most change and change management. So thank you so much for those beautiful uh, thoughts. And uh, with that, um, moving on to Shudipta, who is the chief marketing officer at Starter Loop and a, a great orator. Um, so Shudipta, how do you think investing in women, uh, and I know you take part in multitude of these pieces in your life, uh, and this is perfect. This is a perfect question for you. How can investing in women create a societal and economic change? Do you believe it creates the change? And what has been your experience? Thank you so much, Meena, and thank you so much all to my fellow leader here. Uh, I believe that uh, bringing the change is not just one man or a one woman job. It's everyone's job and everyone has to do their own bit to bring it. I believe some of the ideologies or the principles, uh, for example, Melinda Gates has said that if you really think a strong woman is a woman with a woman with a voice, and I also believe that if you really have to put your voice, you have to bring your chair along with the table because women don't really get the chair and the table. So it's your own responsibility. A woman has to fight a battle twice than a man, but it is important that we win and we continue to battle. So with these quotes, I really would like to give you a few examples. And of course, my shorter loop examples where I'm working and spearheading the uh, global marketing and the branding strategies. Uh, so the first thing is, if you really look into these today's statistics, uh, as of last year, 4.6 persons are the only women CEOs. It's as per standard and poor 500 organizations. And there are only four women who are working as a FTSC 100 women companies. Now look at India. Uh, yesterday, uh, you know, Sudha Murthy got 
Rajasava MP, right? It gives us a real power that we are getting towards a big ship India. And given that our Prime Minister Modi ji's vision that how we really bring women who had worked in all the different domains and empowering the people from different levels. From the low income on, uh, you know, not having the right kind of opportunities to education, uh, economical opportunities, getting mentored, not knowing where he or uh, where she can get the you know high rise income when she is already getting paid. So if you really look at the statistics, and India also has twenty four percent overall women workforce, wherever in thirty percent of them are into service sector, and twenty four percent are into manufacturing. Now. Some of these advanced countries like Norway, Iceland, Sweden, because I I'm a globe trotter and I have a good women connect had traveled to 45 countries. So when I look into their women policies, they give a lot of flexibilities. There are Chris, uh, there are you know flexible as as uh, Kopal also said and Rinku also said there are employee resource groups. Even DEI is also at their board, continuously being monitored every month. How we are doing it? Now let let's take these three examples. If you uh, take this uh, World Bank study that has been done, World Bank says that when you educate a woman, and you also give that power to let them work, not doing the trend setting house roles that women do, right? Giving that caregiver, you actually influence the entire nations. Your entire social e e economy. Now, how? Because women tend to save more, more than two x than a man. Because mm -hmm. here, women give their more number of earnings. The percentage of higher earnings it goes to their child education, child health, and also into the savings for their family members. So that way, you are going one step ahead by bringing the nation along with you, and you are also contributing to the GDP. Now there is a second example. If you look into the McKinsey study, it says that uh, if you create a identical scenario where women and men are giving equal opportunity to education, health, mentoring, and all the basic necessities of your healthcare, then you are actually getting twenty six trillion US dollar contribution to the entire economy. Which is a real great thing. Today we are lagging 361 years of gender gap that we have, and we really have to fill that. That is the second example. Third examples, if I will tell you, if you really look into the SEBA, I, I'm not sure how many of you know. It's a women self-employed women association which has 2.9 million women representation from India. It is made for Indian women, specifically the low income society. Uh, where Melinda Gates, Bill Gates, and of course, uh, you know Satya Nadella, and of course, few other people, Google are also coming forward and educating them, doing a ICT in girls, which uh, Rinku talked about the STEM, uh, you know, specific section, bringing that science, mathematics, logical thinking, strategic thinking. If you really remember that uh, our recent, uh, you know, the goal that we went to moon, right? And one of the scientists, uh, uh, the Queen, Saini, uh, what she told that. Science is not defined by a man or a woman. Correct. So with that, we need improvement in each and every society. And Seva kind of association, many women are not aware of. So it is our own duty to create a continuous awareness at every level. Today, government of India has created a lot of women-friendly scheme, but how many of us are really availing it? Because we don't really know it. So these are the ways. If we really focus, and from the corporate level, from the NGO level, uh, if we really focus at every level, even the hiring should be at a very targeted hiring when you do at the bottom level. Then education, mentoring, upskilling, reskilling, bringing them those passion projects so that they get chosen into the leadership positions that really advance the women economy as a whole. So with this, I really want to take few examples at shorter look that we are doing. We make sure that women voices are heard at every level. Uh, we ensure that we have a good NGO connect globally, Cry and Greenpeace, and then there are a few other organizations. We ensure that each and women are being asked about their mental well-being, health well-being, and also what they really want to do next. If they want to take an opportunity to you know take some time off, yesterday only I created 
a person was you know uh, suffering from some health injuries and also so i told her that you come back after a year but this seat is reserved for you how many of us being a man or women leader create that position and that a uh, sense of job security that yes the job will be there for us because women tend to leak at every level because of so many family and the societal pressure so with that i really want to end and i hope this is has been very insightful for all of you and if there are any questions please do ask lovely shudipta you did not uh, this was not a surprise at all uh, your background your statistics your data that kind of pushed everything so thank you uh, and what we understand um, in terms of what you said was uh investment is not really a man or a woman's role it has to be everybody's role um what i loved was bring your chair but also don't forget to bring the table because i never thought of it so far i'm going away with you with that um and obviously you know investment should happen across sectors across uh you know levels so that you don't have a leaky pipeline at the top um and then you also mentioned about how women are the ones who perhaps are uh, creating the fabric for a strong society economically and that's the reason why we need to really invest in women and uh, your specific examples of shorter loop where voices are heard and there are ngo connects and pulse checks being done like what kopal mentioned as well so thank you so much for that very enriching conversation and thank moving you. on to smita thank you sudipta uh smita yadav has been a long friend of mine uh and uh, she is the head of hr at cdk global um a very composed woman i have met over the years evolved in her space and rightfully um this question goes to her um smita what are some of the examples of programs or initiatives that you are taking to successfully empower women in your organization or what are your observations of the world and how do you think we are taking efforts to improve inclusivity uh, thank you meena firstly for the great introduction uh, it's lovely to uh, you know see you again and connect with you and uh, i truly believe that uh, you know the questions that have come forward to me is something which i am sure there are many other who would like to understand much about it Uh, in very many forums that i have been attending in the last 16 years i have been very active in all those networking sessions of hr uh, because i truly believe in learning together uh, in this journey and growing together and uh, many times i have attended these uh, forums and i have seen that people usually just you know uh, have some english words and then you know the session is over and that is the reason why i really wanted to contribute to this question and i said you know meena i would like to take this the reason is i really uh, want to uh, contribute towards the impact uh, that uh, these initiatives will create right and uh, being in hr it is not just about knowing english it is about creating the right impact it is not about presentation but about the impact is what i truly believe in uh, right and um, yeah i mean uh, also just to you know there's one more stereotype which comes that international women's day celebrated one day is it really required and i take this platform to talk about that and share a few uh, you know views on that as well meena and the group um, yes we have come a long way from where we have started but the journey is not yet over uh, that is what i truly believe right uh, there is so much that we need to achieve um, I, uh, no organization today or no you know sector today can say that we are we have reached we have arrived right we are far, very far from that so it is this international women's day the topics inspire inclusion is actually a reminder for all, for all of us together right that um, uh, the journey is continuing and we all need to stay strong throughout so uh, you know uh, and i think there were some more questions about men's day also being celebrated right uh, uh, you know and i so i uh, hear the statistics from sudipta and from alexander as well right and uh, uh, are we really you know on the ratio of 50 is to 50 that you're talking about uh, having a men's day as well right we are still struggling at 26 uh, 30 32 right uh, uh, in the ratio of men is to women and uh, we look forward to celebrating men's day <laughs> with okay. uh, with great pride that we celebrate the women's day as well is my message to all uh, you know uh, genders across uh, the world yeah so coming back to the questions uh, that amina has uh, put forth for me what are the initiatives uh, 
So uh, I would like to add here that the initiatives are not exhaustive, right? Uh, there is so much of impact that, we, that that can be created. There's so much of innovation that can be thought. Innovation is not just limited to uh, technology. It is also limited to our mindset and our thoughts is what I believe. I will just pick up two to three um, initiatives that I have in my experience uh, run through at CDK Global or in my previous organizations, right? And the first, star it starts with assigning a mentor to a woman employee. And um, uh, Meena will also remember we have worked together uh, in the past and we did some, uh, you know, great strides in uh, uh, ensuring that, you know, mentorship programs are picked up. It is very important for uh, a newbie in the industry, uh, right, uh, to understand that what what is the scope of the industry, how much can an individual offer and what kind of, uh, you know, training and development they need to invest in early in their career. Right. Uh, I must say I've been fortunate enough in my journey. I've been inspired by so many uh, hardworking, smart working women that I every day it's a reminder that I need to serve as an example for somebody. So I truly believe that organizations need to invest in the mentorship coaching programs wherein uh, uh, there is a certain amount of investment being done towards the development of the individual or towards the development of women. Uh, I, I heard Sudipta or, you know, Alexander also speak about are we in a marriage market or, a, you know, um, a, you know, a, a corporate sector. So the, the reason I am sure that the thought has come is while we are starting with 50s to 50 when it is interns uh, moving to corporates, right? How much is that being seen at the table, right? Uh, we spoke about it. It's just some 18% of leadership on board uh, on, uh, you know, the table and it is very important for us to invest not only in the hiring but also in the journey of after hiring of uh, right uh, it, it could be development it could be uh, you know career growth career aspirations how much are we investing in the entire journey rather than just getting in them and then probably you know as told uh, making them ready for the marriage market that is not what the intent is so definitely organizations need to keep, uh, you know, uh, the resources, the support available throughout the journey of a woman in the career, right? And uh, the second thing, I think, uh, again, it is very important for uh, the organization to say that it is gender inclusive doesn't only mean women groups as employee resource groups, right? Mm -hmm. It's very important that we include men leaders uh, in the journey and how much are they coached and trained? Uh, for example, what is a language, right? I mean, what is a, a language has a lot of power, we all know. And when leaders talk, it is very important that they are, uh, you know, uh, gender inclusive in the conversations that they are doing. Uh, very many times I've seen women leaders, uh, when given an example about any product or experience, uh, the only word that comes in the mind that is he or the name of a man in that example. And I have, and I always prompt them and say that, excuse me, you know, the consumer, the end user of the product or the experience could also be a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know how the woman market is flourishing. Uh, the, the products of women are flourishing in the market. So it's very important that the language is also being considered. So how much of training are we doing to the leaders of the organization to ensure that there is gender inclusivity, in not only in actions, but also in the language, right? Uh, yeah, and uh, this, the third one, I think, which is, again, very key is the support that uh, women who are getting into a new journey of motherhood are taking in the organization. Because uh, when we look at the retention plans and the attrition numbers, we understand women who are stepping into maternity, they either tend to take a break or they actually leave the corporate world for good, right? And that's not the good act in actual sense, though. Uh, right. And it's very important for organizations to celebrate motherhood, right? Build programs where when an employee is leaving uh, towards the maternity journey, they are respected and it is celebrated in the team rather than being seen as this person is not available for this number of months. No, you know, it's very important for them to tell that we are happy with you in this milestone of your personal life and we wish you are back and we will support you when you're back right yep. the sense of job security when they are leaving on for the maternity and when they come back uh, in uh, in our organization at cdk we've started this some two three years back uh, this initiative called super mom wherein any mother returning uh, after maternity is assigned a buddy so that there is a mental and a physical support which is being given that you know even i have i was a new mother i joined back and you know the organization has this resources uh, the community has this resources let us explore and keep continuing our journey we need to be the right role models for each other 
uh, right and yeah and i truly uh, uh, am i truly am uh, you know advocate of gender inclusivity uh, i have full respect for all the genders that we uh, see in the world it's very important to be happy is what i feel <laughs> and happiness will only come when we all are respected well we all are uh, taken care well and i think sudipta made a very right statement i'm so much with her just do a self reflection and see how much investment is happening in both the genders at home it starts with home right it starts with the family and we are raising children uh, you know or we see our, our family members raising children it's very important to put the right investment and only then the right results will also come out beautiful thank you meena for uh, this opportunity to share some thoughts on this and i have many more ideas to share if there is anybody who really believes that they need to build something in this space uh, feel free to reach out to me any time and i'll be happy to share or build a network that we can together contribute towards uh, you know uh, being a respectable and a very fair world for all genders thank you lovely um that's a great uh, you know um help or assistance that smita is providing so reach out to her audience and of course we all will to smita so uh, i think from an impactful initiatives perspective there are uh, three to four takeaways for us you said you started with the mindset which is the most critical bit of moving the needle um, and our own thought processes and our own perception of barriers that we need to kill before we seek inclusivity from the world outside uh, you you talked about mentoring and coaching as a very important intervention to invest in women um the post hiring journey is equally important and it's not that you hire and you leave them there you spoke about um, you know how men should be using inclusive language all of us should be using inclusive language to make sure that women are empowered and lastly you talked brilliantly about the support that we should be getting post our uh, motherhood and the wow motherhood journey that you have created at cdk thank you so much for all of it and uh, can i request uh, you know pushpita if she would like to add on to smita so pushpita over to you and pushpita has a very beautiful portfolio she is the head of gig platform in wipro and before this conversation i was telling her so important to learn from uh, what's happening in the gig world unlike people like me who've been with organizations for eons uh, over to you pushpita yeah thank you so much and first of all i'm very excited to be part of this esteemed uh, panel and thanks uh, meena uh, for giving me the opportunity so uh, i think the question was uh, what exactly is happening is there good examples in the world so i uh, put my answers in two ways one i'll talk about society because i really like what alex said and i've heard this many times culture it uh, strategy for the breakfast and he said uh, it is for dinner and lunch also <laughs> so let's look at uh, the societal because that's where we are built as humans and then we move to work place or any other place so i think uh, at the we are the right moment uh, india is really shining very proud to be in india and be indian and i'm very happy that i didn't go abroad uh, to settle down at the moment it's like a great thing so if you really look at what is happening in the india in our society nari shakti is the theme now i think that's a very big boost to what we are talking about diversity and all the thing and i think just creating a ppt and strategy is not enough you will need to work the job and that's exactly what prime minister modi is doing if anyone has watched this 26th uh, january parade you see the how beautifully nari shakti has been demonstrated to the world and i was saying that this is a good marketing budget well spent so the world knows that we need nari shakti and we do it uh, then i have seen some uh, videos which in the social media where there is a scheme there are a lot of schemes which india is doing one of them is lakpati didi and that's you know that's touching the grassroots level so uh, prime minister modi was talking to some women i think it's in lucknow in up saying uh, that you know you get 1 lakh rupees and then you invest and you do and these these are not women uh, educated women like us and very privileged these are all people in the village who probably have never seen the school but that this scheme is for them and one of the villager she came and she was kind of leading the conversation so impressive the prime minister modi asked do you want to go and uh, you know become a politician and chunao uh, ladogi that's what he asked you know so that's exactly telling at the grassroots level the villages 
where the most of the India lives, that it is possible. It is possible, and there are a lot of uh, things like that Bujwala, where you know we subsidize the gas cylinders. There are a lot of schemes. So, which is telling that we understand what the pain the women in the society go through, and we are trying. So that's on the societal level. And back home, uh, you would say I have two boys, no girl. So I believe that first women has to change their mindset before asking for men to change their mindset. So even if I have the education, I have done everything, but in the home, if I look at the girl that you pick up the dishes, that means I'm not keen or I'm just not working the talk. So I, I'm fortunately having two boys, the way I'm growing them up, I always tell them whoever eats has to clean the table. So three men in my house cleans the table, including my husband. So the boys have inspired my husband to do it. And I call that as this is not girl skills. This is life skill. You need to understand there's nothing called girls chores. In the past, the way society is built, because there was a lot of physical labor requirements. That is where men was going out, women were staying and doing other things. And you can't say the woman is uh, not physically fit because you know, women can give birth to a child and thus if we go to any website you check what kind of pressure you handle when you are giving birth to a child normally. So that's what I'll say on the societal thing. On the uh, policies and whatever we're doing at Wipro, I can talk about Wipro and I know a lot of uh, my colleagues, my panelists have talked about. We also have a wow mom program which is investing on the motherhood when they're going and they're coming back. So we do have that. And uh, in Wipro, we have Chief Culture Officer Sunita. I mean, she is on top of everything. Every month, it's, she is tracking and she is questioning every leader that why your diversity index is so poor. So she is empowered to do and she works with, directly with Risha. So that's the great thing we have. So we are walking the talk. We have uh, pride groups. We have begin again, I think, uh, women who have breaks. You know, in their career, we're selling minimum six months break and how much max? 90 years. It could be 90 years also. You know, I, I'm just making a, giving a perspective. So I think Begin Again also Accenture in PHL, they also have, but we have it. And in fact, our recruiters are called as diversity champions. They're not called as recruiters. So which means if you're putting two resumes of men, you must look at three other resumes of women. You need to have it. And this is driven across and it's, it's happening, it's really helping. There is an unconscious bias training we have in Wipro. Everybody has to pass it, and this is tracked at central level. And our CEO, Amit Chaudhary, is very particular about it. So we know that when a leader is pushing the agenda, you know, things change the, in the company, right? That's what is happening. In fact, my boss, uh, Shinji, in the, who's the global head of business operations, he's also very keen. In fact, ours is the highest in all be pro hour percentage. But then is, is it a tick mark? Is it like 50% you achieve and you go? No, this is a daily thing you need to do and we have to change the mindset. So we pro the CEO theory actually invests in women. I have been fortunate to already talk to him twice. I just joined Wipro two years back. I was in my other company cognizant for 20 years before moving to Wipro. So talking to, he uh, goes and talks to all women leaders and this is a ritual, he has to do it. And he does it, it's not that he's busy. So he spends time, Richard spends time. We have an enriched program, which is picking the leaders, potential leaders and grooming them. We have sponsorship, we have mentors and a lot of other things I can go on. But mm -hmm. to me, what Wipro is doing great we have a crash. In fact, Wipro has inbuilt crash, which is very, very rare because generally people sign up for other places, but you have in-house, so it's very easy for women. But I think I like to end my thoughts saying that it has to begin with us. Before we look towards the men, we should look out to ourselves saying, if I'm a leader, I've come so far, am I actually bringing two other leaders, women leaders? That's how the world will change, the society will change, and back home, there is nothing called home chores. It yeah. is life skills. That's yeah. what I think. Absolutely. I think thank you so much, Pushpita, for those wonderful uh, views. And uh, so nice to see an example of a woman who is actually building life skills at home, which is so important in the society. Uh, thank you so much for airing that. And uh, I'm going to hand this over to my co-moderator, Deepa, now uh, with her set of questions for another wonderful brilliant panelists for the rest of the session. Over to you, Deepa.
Thank you so much, Meena. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Very, very happy to be here and talking and hearing to such esteemed panelists. And some of the ideas and initiatives that we are seeing that organizations are taking are so beautiful because they are empowering women. And like Pushpita, I just heard you say, you know, one of the things that came to my mind and we've spoken about it and we've read in a lot of WhatsApp messages, while we're talking about empowering women, are we also raising boys who can handle empowering women, right? Because that's the bottleneck, that's the mindset that we need to change, not just for women, but equally for men and the uh, you know other people who are part of the support system and who are pushing women higher so so let's talk about all of that and uh, so we've discussed about what are the barriers we've heard about the challenges we've heard about the gender gap we've heard about 361 years of gender gap just to become 50 percent and come to that equitable uh, level and then we've also spoken about why is it important to invest in women and what happens when you invest in women and how do economies change and what kind of transformations we see, not just at a global uh, nation level, but also at a home level, right? When we say that if our education is granted to one woman, the whole linear changes because that's the power of educating and empowering one woman. So after having discussed the barriers after having discussed why is it important let's come to the hows of it so how are you going to now implement these things that we're talking about so my next panelist zarna is the head hr versa network and uh, to you zarna i want to ask how can i uh, have to become okay to include everybody so what can organizations do that can foster that kind of culture of belonging and then everybody feels valued and supported so what are your thoughts on that Thank you so much, uh, Deepa, for this uh, beautiful question. And uh, thank you, w, uh, GWFM, for having me and for this opportunity. It was, uh, you know, lovely to hear from all the panelists and uh, learn a lot from them. And I could very much relate from each one of you uh, based on your thoughts that you shared across and the kind of, uh, you know, culture that uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, brought across to your organization or the initiatives that you are taking because, it all starts at home, as uh, you know, rightly mentioned by uh, Pushpita. <coughs> Sorry, and I strongly believe in that as well. And um, um, uh, my some of my thoughts might be repetitive because I believe a lot of points have already been co covered. But I'll try and make it bring some uh, new, uh, you know, um, uh, topic to it if I uh, thoughts to it. So, yeah. Um, I, I believe that, um, you know, any culture um, for that matter uh, is is always a, a joint effort, uh, you know, for, be it organization or be it having a culture in the family as well. So it all starts from us. It all starts from home and it starts from the unity that we kind of, you know, build. So first of all, uh, uh, as a leader, um, you know, we need to ensure that the senior leadership needs to actively champion the diversity and the inclusion initiatives. And this can involve the participation in the discussions, sponsoring employees, uh, resource group, as some of, some of them have already mentioned that, uh, focused on gender and holding themselves accountable for fostering a welcoming environment. And uh, that's how, uh, you know, building um, a foundation uh, of inclusion, um, be it unconscious biasness training, um, you know, where we have to educate the managers and employees on unconscious, bi you know, un uh, unconscious biasness that can uh, hinder the fair treatment uh, and the opportunities. Uh, and this can help people uh, recognizing and uh, mitigate their own biases in decision making, which is very, very important. A um, lot of people, I think, uh, gives a list important to uh, it because unconsciously we are really being biased. And first of all, to introduce that training itself, there are a lot of uh, unconscious biases that people will have. So that needs to be kind of, uh, you know, cultivate uh, down right from there. Uh, then including, uh, you know, a lot of hiring uh, uh, processes where uh, it's important to review the hiring practices to ensure that they are gender neutral and focus on the skills and the qualifications. Um, so utilizing by, uh, you know, the diverse uh, interview panels uh, to get the wider range of perspective is, again, very, very important. Uh, many times we've seen that uh, whenever there are some technical interviews, we try and include only the guys uh, and that kind of goes by default. And we ask going, hey, can you please be part of the technical interview? But I think that's something that we need to change. And I'm proud to say that Versa, you know, even in some of the challenging roles, we have been able to hire the women employees 
um you know by including uh, the women as a one of the panel uh, member as well um and i think uh, smita rightly said it's not just about men or women it also um goes without saying that we also need to look at the equity you know if it uh, it's just based on the skill set right and ensure that we are doing the fair treatment and that is possible only when we are including it in our right in our uh, you know hiring process and try to be that neutral gender in our policy um which is very important um be it women be it men or even the age diversity for that matter we have people who are like you know um, um, about 55 60 age till they are uh, you know at a leadership role and and doing wonderful job because we are not really judging them by their age but then in fact we are getting a lot of advantages based on the experience that they are you know having so that's important to look at it a very uh, broader perspective um you know by giving them the equitable opportunities uh another point i would like to bring here is uh, having uh, and to be able to do that it's important to have the open you know communications and collaborations uh, we need to encourage uh, this kind of uh, you know environment across uh, teams and genders and this can involve fostering a psychological safe environment where everyone feels you know comfortable um sharing the ideas um it's important to have a lot of uh, you know social events and activities by which i meant that uh, we need to organize a lot of uh, you know social events and activities that creates a diverse uh, intense background and this helps employee to build the relationship and feel connected outside of the work uh, as well because once you get connected once you are able to bring people from a different background um i think uh, and talk about the diversity and all it automatically kind of you know floats around without saying it or without even sometimes talking about it because you are already celebrating diversity you know you are able to involve you are able to connect people um and uh, that uh, you know uh, also leads to the recognizing and uh, appreciation at the same time um unless until you recognize and celebrate the achievement of all the employees regardless of gender uh you know um we would not be able to foster the environment uh, of it so it's important to foster the environment of recognitions and appreciation across all the you know diverse background um because this reinforce the value of the uh, you know value that the everybody brings to the table um so it's important to have a inclusive company culture by integrating the diversity and inclusion into the company's mission vision and the policies Uh, and this kind of innovate you know, strong uh, send out the strong messages about the organization's commitment um, as a welcoming you know environment um, uh, again um, you know uh, continuous measurement and improvement is something that is required by uh, somebody mentioned that doing the regular uh, you know uh, feedback by uh, maybe uh, by doing employee pulse surveys and uh, you know regularly regularly also socialize the feedback uh, employee through not only service but also through a focus group or anonymous reporting system to identify the areas of improvement um yeah. after all of these things i would also suggest that it's important to have the data and analytics uh, where we can track the diversity in metrics uh, like hiring rates or promotions or employee satisfactions to measure this progress and identify the areas uh, that needs more focus um yeah. i think by yeah. you know implementing this kind of uh, organize I mean, you know strategies organization can create the culture of belonging where uh, you know everyone regardless of gender uh, feels valued and respected and empowered to contribute the best uh, of the work that they have done yeah absolutely thank you so much for sharing zana those were like very very beautiful insights and um, i can hear some themes which are getting you know repeated across yes. the panelists which just reinforces the need for us to focus and build on that and uh, one of the statements that alex said and you know that's coming out again and again is that culture eats strategy for breakfast so if you're not building empowering culture and not creating a sense of belonging then we are losing the whole game of promoting diversity at workplace so a few things which stood out for me uh, one is you know focusing at a top down level so senior leadership from the senior leadership if the message is coming down like wipro is is doing and all the other organizations are doing i think that's paramount that's paramount to set the message and then work towards it so that and then how you beautifully said unconscious bias you know and specifically in decision making 
because right. these biases come into play automatically and we don't even know that we are biased right right and there's so many exercises and you know workshops that are done to help people see those biases first before uh, before going ahead and actually working on them and then merit based hiring process a diverse panel absolutely i think that makes a difference big time and open communication and collaboration to which being a coach i work with a lot of women leaders and i see how they are not felt heard so right. while we are working on giving these specific opportunities to women are we also asking them what do they want i think that's an important aspect of what you have said as well so thank you so much for contributing with your viewpoints they were really insightful and um, pleasure thank you so much for this opportunity thank you zarna all right so with that let's move to shavar who's the director hr and um, shavar for you uh, we are talking about strategies for promoting inclusion and diversity at workplace and we've heard our panelists talk about a lot of uh, beautiful uh, insights and steps so what have you seen in your personal experience that effectively promotes inclusion and diversity at workplace and also in communities so talk to us about your experience and your uh, insights on that aspect yeah thank you so much deepa for the question so pretty much when i am just hearing to all this uh, you know uh, questions that we've been talking about the discussions we've been talking about i think most of you have covered whatever i wanted to talk for instance alex brought up about a very nice point about a top down approach like where zarna and smita so i will still kind of reiterate the same thing because in our organization we also follow a very strong protocol top down approach where we have every month reviews where we look at the diversity metrics in terms of be it internal or be it the hiring statistics so that is very com that's coming really strongly for us what happens is if at all it is being really drilled down from the top to bottom then everybody gets serious about it they all know that this is a very key initiative and a very important initiative because it's very important that while it is being drilled down from top to down even the line managers across all levels also should understand the importance sometimes they feel that why should we do it it is okay the gender is the same be it uh, be it a woman folk or a male folk we all are doing the same work but they also should understand that even a women folk is equally intelligent equally capable and able to do things which is very important and what they don't understand is that i think women have more higher capacity and capability and resilience to manage even in you know dire situations that's what we have always observed because i work personally with all the women folks and i drive the hiring practices also so what we have just started doing this is because doing this is that we started the return to work initiative then we also started women on maternity break and rehire campaign so we are doing some focus campaigns though necessary we don't want to really show it that we want to do only during the international women's day i really uh, resonate very well to uh, when somebody said that you know why should we even celebrate international women's day even i really correlate to that because i feel that all 365 days are men's days and women's days we all have to just work in tandem and there's a very good beautiful saying when is the last time we did something for the first time and this is the belief we should always bring in with people that you know there is always a start there is always a first time for everybody and take that along with us with the people at home or with the communities or even in the teams at the organization level at the managers also so uh, another thing that i would like to bring in is having inclusive job ads and clearly state our hiring needs very important because when uh, the top management and the uh, the hiring team is kind of driving the recruitment strategy is saying we will do 50% women profiles and 50% male profiles just to have the gender balance but the people out there who are actually evaluating should also resonate to the same thing so what we have two panels while doing the interviews we call it as first round second round but clubbing both panels not necessary it will be a female and a male but what we do is we just want a uh, i would say a very neutral feedback or a very neutral evaluation probably some might be biased may not be all of them are biased so we don't want to really generalize over here we really respect women uh, men uh, thought process as well because we also learn a lot from them because most of it whatever is given here uh, we, we would see that even the men are actually driving these initiatives so we should respect that and you also work in tandem and collaborate with, with each other another thing i see here is that having the equal pay for equal work which we always fight for because women don't really come forward to actually call out and say that you know why am i being paid less though my job my work stretching hours what i do is all this also the same and sometimes i overstretch with my work working hours and i also try to do my upskilling then why am i not being paid well women are really not open to these discussions they fear 
they think that this is my job i better do it because i have to safeguard my work so we have to come out of those barriers from our mind and we always should think that if i am doing a certain amount of job i get i should be paid as what i deserve so it is equal for male and female another thing that i would like to bring in is uh, what we see generally is that we have very few women folks in the it tech stream or even the streams where when we go to the campus hiring we see many uh, women folks or even the male folks who are pulling off themselves from the mechanical engineering civil engineering or even the aviation workforce so what we've been seeing is the it has taken over so much of you know uh, i would say it has become a giant now and more or more or less all of them are working towards moving towards it but not many realize what is what what it can do even the other industries also can do so i think we should understand the talent behind what we have and then we should identify where we will really set in or where we, we can really fit into that kind of a role and try to be passionate about our work rather than just doing it for the heck of it i think we should be more passionate so this is one thing i learned from the campus uh, you know uh, colleges where they said that a lot of uh, women folks are pulling themselves away even for the it streams so today if i have to go back and hire somebody at the technical architect level very very few women folks why because probably they have taken breaks they couldn't get time for upskilling or probably the companies are not encouraging them to come forward and you know give the leeway or that mentorship yeah. like someone mentioned giving a mentorship program to them and invest time i think it's very important so it should not be a sympathy i i think employee should stop thinking it's a sympathy it's not sympathy it is empowerment so i think that is very important for people to understand because be it women or men i think we will actually try and do the same thing for both genders it's just that we are trying to encourage women to come forward in the technical streams so that we have more it leaders so that we have uh, we have people talking technology where we are lacking actually at this point of time but otherwise i think more or less everybody has covered all the points so i don't want to reiterate that because i really had another thing called as an engagement survey for the women folks where we can bring out uh, you know we can understand the temperature of inclusion in the organization while you know encouraging the women folks to talk about be it in promotions if they are really not, not, not being considered or even if they are not being considered for higher responsibilities or they are being actually you know held back for lo longer hours though it is not required so i yeah. think we have to encourage women yeah that's Thank my you. view Thank you so much, Shavar. I think you have know, reiterated some of the points which are so important, and I see how they are being implemented slightly differently in every organization, but the focus remains the same. So, a couple of things that um, really stood out for me: one was educating people at different levels. So, even if there is a top level guideline, but do the line managers know? Do the hiring managers know? Do the people at the grassroots level, or even people entering the organization, are aware of the of the focus of the vision and the mission so top level hiring education and i loved this when was the last time we did something for the first time so there's always a first time and there's always a first time that we can introduce new things and experiment with new things i think experimentation also helps us to see what is not working what is working and then change the direction as needed um right and um, fitment that's a beautiful thing because i i truly believe that we all are unique in our own ways and we bring our own purpose and passion so if we can align and be aligned to the purpose of the organization and our purpose and then just make sure that we are at the place where we can thrive uh, right i think that's that's a beautiful point and finally one thing that um, i see you know a challenge or a area of improvement which you also mentioned is make it okay for women to ask i need yes. a better pay i need a promotion i think um, you know i deserve to be at the next level so raising oh. these important points by women and asking for it explicitly in their appraisal discussions in the discussions discussions i think that will create the difference for uh, at the grassroots level so thank you so much for thank for you. raising these important points and uh, and sharing them with us so let's now we've heard about it. initiatives now how can we amplify these voices so we all are talking about brilliant initiatives but how do we make them heard by people by women men and everybody at the workplace so moving on to rajni who is the senior manager lnd for tech systems so rajni how can we ensure that diverse voices and perspectives particularly those of women are heard and respected in the decision making process so how do we make them more visible and heard so over to you yeah. Well, thank you so much for the question thank you gwfm for inviting me and uh, really pleasure to hear all of you uh, and your perspectives 
Um, I will try my level best to filter out everything that has already been spoken, <laughs> because I think we're all sailing the same boat uh, and a lot of initiatives uh, sort of overlap in different organizations and different flavors. Um, focusing on the question particularly, right, how are women heard and um, the second part, which is decision making processes. So um, I would want to focus my response uh, on those two elements based on particularly the self, the organization and the community. So the first thing uh, that I would say is probably going to be triggering for a few people uh, because uh, a lot of times we say we are fighting against something. You know, it makes it sound like it's a revolution and there is a fight going on between the two genders, right? And what we want to instill instead is the spirit of partnership, right? Uh, I recently had a, a very um, friendly banter with, uh, with a male colleague and uh, he mentioned, uh, well, you know, we are celebrating Women's Day for you. What about men, right? What about men? Um, and I said, uh, well, you know, I, I feel you, brother, because uh, I'm a single parent. I wear both the hats. So, so, uh, and immediately the response that came to me was that uh, you're an exception, right? Uh, I'm not an exception. I think all of us, uh, you know, share those responsibilities. And a lot of times we overlook uh, the spirit of allyship that comes with with this uh, sense of partnership that we want to create right we don't want to we want to create an equitable world which does not mean that we rise in numbers and and the men should go down right mm. we are still trying to get to a level where we are getting equitable with everybody so from my perspective i think that's important the other thing is um the fact that women need to be clear Right. A lot of times we say women are not getting an opportunity. Women are not able to you know, position themselves. Women are not getting this, that and the other. Right. But are women really clear? Um, so the question is, if you want to make a correct decision in life, there are three imperatives, in my opinion. One is clarity, your own clarity in terms of what you want, your confidence to be able to articulate that. Right. And then come forward and communicate it. Right. Come forward and communicate it. So uh, for me personally, my my agenda in terms of what I do in learning and development or within the organization is not to create that disparity between men and women, but to bridge that gap and bring it closer. So some of the key initiatives that we have undertaken is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the uh, DEI Council, which is the uh, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Council part of the inception team, in fact, and we have uh, devised three pillars, uh, which is gender, uh, the Gen Z pillar, I mean, or the generational pillar, and the people with disabilities pillar. Um, and we have uh, our tasks oriented based on the three pillars uh, that we do on a regular basis. Now we, you know, we inspired our headquarters in the US to also start off with the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Council. Uh, strangely, so in our organization, we don't call it DEI, we call it inclusion and diversity. And uh, there is a particular reason for bringing that inclusion aspect first is because I think inclusion is the uh, prerequisite or the playground, right, where everything else can happen. Yeah. A lot of times, I mean, I've heard people talking about recruitment, we've talked, you know, we've talked about bringing in the numbers and all of those things, right? It's very easy to target diversity. But it's very difficult to instill inclusion, right? And that's why our focus in a lot of our initiatives is, uh, let's say, even the training sessions that we conduct on a regular basis, we have, uh, uh, you know, one program every month, which is focused only on DEI. So we will pick up something like, and, and we've seen large numbers come into those sessions, right? I mean, we don't even realize the pulse of, of people and what they're thinking. But very recently, we had a session on mindfulness where we, you know, we had a large number that wanted to attend that session. We had to split it into two, uh, two different sessions for them. Um, that's one part of it. The other is ERGs. You know, I've I've heard my esteemed, esteemed colleagues talk about it. Uh, we have a lot of different ERGs within Tech Systems Global Services. We have the multicultural. We have the breast cancer. We have the health and well-being. We have the women's ERG. And so, you know, I'm a part of the global uh, WIM, uh, wings uh, is what we call it, women in GS. And uh, in India, we have uh, a separate one uh, that we've sort of established for APAC. Uh, and we've called it she. Um, she is, as you know, you know, we, we tend to use the pronoun, right? <laughs> in these days, it's, it's very fashionable to use a pronoun. But for us, it stands for support, honor, and empower. 
Uh, and our uh, initiative here is to ensure that we are, you know, continuously partnering with our uh, male colleagues, building that sense of allyship with them. And you'll be surprised that, you know, as we launched um, this, I mean, I just made an announcement on Women's Day and I asked, you know, all the men that were present in the room, would you be like to, uh, would you like to be a part of the uh, launch? And it was an overwhelming yes. So we made it a global event where we had people from APAC, so employees, irrespective of the gender, to come into the uh, into the sessions, we had a CTO attend the session. You know, so uh, there are there are opportunities. So what I'm trying to say is that you know when we look at self, definitely it starts with our own own self. You know, having clarity around what we want to do, and then focusing on action points rather than you know the theoretical elements or the conceptual elements around uh, inclusion. The other is organization investment. Right, investment is not about money always. Investment is about creating the ecosystem right? Where you have a change of mindset and that is what brings about the real change in, in things. We have community where we are reaching out to organizations like Technovation, which are very focused on women uh, in technology, right? I mean, supporting them in their educational endeavors. So uh, from all those perspectives, uh, we are doing work. In tech systems, we've also initiated some diversity, um, you know, cohorts within our leadership programs. We've ensured that we've had at least 90% of our, uh, you know, uh, participants in the leadership program as women. And I, I'll tell you that it was not a, it was not a very acceptable thought at the beginning, right? Because then, like I mentioned, it creates a sense of inequity with, with men, right? Why are we focusing so much on women? Um, but these are the things that you need to really talk through and and uh, get to. You know, we have programs similar to other colleagues that have mentioned. We have something called Vatsalya which is not about women coming back to work, but ensuring that they're continuously connected during their maternity period with work. So they have a mentor who is continuously talking about what is the what are the updates in the project? You know, what are the new technologies that we're looking at? What are the new customers that we're looking at? So women don't feel out of place when they come back into the workforce. And yeah. that is the sense of trust and security that we want to create. Um, you know, and so, so, so for me, I think it's about development. It's about mentoring. It's about ensuring that we have partnership with men uh, and focusing on action points rather than the conceptual elements. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing that. And it's refreshing to hear from an LND space that how you're focused on creating, like you said, so beautifully equitable culture, you know. And I keep saying that, that as we focus on women, the men shouldn't feel left out or... Right. Uh, it should not become like a tick box saying, okay, we have so many women at this point, but then the women, the men, uh, you know, are are sacrificing or we are promoting the less, uh, you know, the meritocracy takes, I takes feel, a hit. Yeah, I feel that, you know, the moment you say that, you know, I'm fighting against something or yes, I'm trying yes. to, you know, I'm trying to get my space there, it's disempowering there itself, right? Absolutely. I mean, you've put yourself in a disempowered position. And, you know, a friend of mine, I've, I've seen a lot of, uh, heard a lot of quotes here. A friend of mine actually told me this and it's just stuck in my head. So I, I just wanted to share it here. I think women need to start thinking of life as anything is possible and nothing is wrong. Right. <laughs> That's where <laughs> I, we want to be, right? Yeah, I think you have summed uh, it up beautifully. So we'll just, you know, take that sure. as your, uh, <laughs> you know, as your statement of uh, what you think, because it just shares everything you said in one sentence. Right. So thank you so much, Rajni. And with that, let's move on to our final panelist, Aparna. And um, we, we're talking about amplifying voices. And uh, like Rajni said, uh, you know, there are women who feel marginalized. And by marginalized, as I was, uh, you know, uh, working on this panel discussion, I was looking up the meaning. And it, it a beautiful meaning came up. We just said that if a woman feels less powerful, it doesn't matter where she is coming from. It doesn't matter what education she has or not has. But if she feels less powerful and less than in the culture or the corporate, that means she is marginalized, right? So uh, when we say equitable, we're talking about everything. And so my question to you, Aparna, is what steps, and if you can add on to what Rajni said, what steps can we take to amplify the voices of marginalized women who feel they are less than, they don't fit in, they are you know, slightly outside of the societal norms or the expectations, wherever they are, and promote their inclusion in discussions and initiatives. So, Aparna, over to you. Thanks, Deepa. Thanks for that question. And then uh, thanks, Rajni, for kind of taking it on. It's like passing on the bait to the next segment of the question that was um, put across to me. 
I'm uh, thankful as well as pleased to be included in the panel. So let me start with that. Um, and then at the beginning of the session, I think uh, Meena put out a wonderful story as to what really made her think uh, uh, differently, you know, because when she's sitting in the air conditioned the ecosystem, but having to think about another woman who's really struggling for the life, I think that's the starting point to be able to correlate it to what is marginalization. And a lot of it also has been spoken by Pushpita in terms of the organization, how are they really doing it, and her own perspectives of where does it really begin. Uh, we've certainly heard about the uh, phrase, charity begins at home. I will say a mind shift and a mindset starts at home, right? Today, when I'm not doing well, or if I have to, when, when whatever it comes to about childcare, the first thing that comes to anybody's mind is the mom, right? It's the women in the family. And uh, whenever anything that relates to cooking, the first thing that comes to is a woman in the family. Or you take about the uh, bringing up the child or any such daily chores, it's the women who would hold the first step or it's assumed. So how do we really move beyond that and then probably voice out? It starts with me. And then that is how, uh, add to the, adding to the point with Smita as well as Rajni spoke about the clarity. Am I clear as to what I'm asking for? Am I standing up for myself? With that, I know a lot of us, and you did uh, give a fantastic perspective coming from the corporate. I also have moved from the corporate family for many years, and now I've just taken a shift or pivoting my uh, professional space in the development sector or the impact sector for that matter. In these sectors, the concept of marginalization is quite different. The way inclusivity is looked at is quite different because it's just not about a program or an initiative, but in the true sense, how as an organization or how as an individual is standing up or getting up to be able to meet the needs of the society, meet the needs of the marginalized population. To begin with, I think it's important for us to understand that marginalization is multidimensional. This is a very, very brief about uh, bringing our own perspective into marginalization. Now, the examples look there as the examples stand about marginalized population includes groups that are excluded. It could be about race, it could be about gender, it could be about uh, geography, class, sexual orientation, age. Uh, disability, and even language for that matter. And I see we uh, experience this in the groups that we work across in the organization, right? Certain set of people come from a certain region and then we have a bias, I mean, unconscious bias. And when it comes to language, you know, many a times people are not vocal, but I think we are all experiencing and as HR leaders, as DNI leaders, we're trying our best to devise a common program wherein we try and minimize the bias and then shift towards the action. And then again, the term marginalized is generally uh, meaning to relegate. I would use it this way, or probably tag an unimportant position within a society or within a community or a group as such. And hence, these kind of practices would certainly manifest ignoring the needs of a specific group, people or community at large, which would uh, probably uh, stay them away in providing the same opportunities that all of us are uh, eligible or everything is available for everybody across the society. And hence, keeping this as a theme, uh, there are multiple factors that would emerge which can certainly demonstrate of how marginalization uh, by means of a process or by means of certain population experience differentiation in terms of the determinants uh, from the social factors in itself, right? The themes I really talk about is, how do we really, um, uh, the first theme that comes to my mind is, how are these margins created? Like, how do we uh, define them? How do we uh, make us understand them? How is it maintained and uh, bringing it into the force? Some may be intentional, some may just be by the virtue of practice or uh, develop. Uh, the example I can quote is people from the urban side of the society are a lot more privileged in terms of the better, better education systems or better means of everything they have access to. But if you go back in the uh, tier one, tier three cities or some of the states, you know, a lot many youth and even women are not empowered. Forget about empowerment. I don't think they really have access to the basic needs. It again starts with a mindset or a mentality that uh, they bring the family really owns for their development. Like recently, I was mentoring in one of the college 
and I met uh, a very, very intelligent uh, girl, but from a different community. I think it's with great difficulty that her dad has actually approved of her to be in the college. But the moment the college sessions are done, I think uh, they're forcing her to get married. And they're... I was just quoting an example of this girl with all the intelligence, with all the ability for her to, with all the interest and aspirations, how somebody is being curtailed because the family believes that for women, she's not supposed to study further. At the end of the day, she's going to get just get married and be part of the family doing nothing but to be able, responsible to be a mother which and again very skewed while the college is supporting i think this is one of the example i can go and the second thing um, which also comes is the populations which are separated uh, because of the uh, geography it could be because of the language and today's space it could be about the hybrid working and then how people feel differentiated by virtue of not being there in presence this would also mean a cohort of folks who are privileged to be able to speak and then go out and parties, go out and informal meetings, and then how they really are accessible to some of the information, which otherwise really doesn't get percolated. And the third thing which really uh, brings marginalization into perspective is the excluded group or uh, who are vulnerable. And uh, this is due to the structural differences and in the societal inequities. Uh, you talk about various schemes that the government has run. I mean, I was just reading one other um, advisory which the government has released for all employers across the country, including a broad range of sectors where women need to be employed. What is the kind of benefits? What are the kind of uh, infrastructure that they need to be enabled in order to get women folk to work? It could be in the construction industry, it could be in the aviation industry, it could be in a sector which is, um, I mean, grassroots levels uh, primarily, that's what I was trying to um, mention it over here. So all these themes illustrate that there are marginalized population who have limited access or resources that can promote or help them support for the good outcomes. And that is definitely increasing the risk with which we are engaging women workforce uh, at large. Um, the second part of the question, Nadeepa, you did mention is um, how can we as an individual and at large as an organization or as a society that we would be able to value add and how do we really help people raise voices to bring across the similar level of accessibility, availability of the support and resources to do the livelihood. Forget about the uh, elite accessibility, but at least fundamentally what is really required for women to come into the workforce so that our economy is better and whatever mission that the um, uh, prime minister has set for, for the country to be able to move into the developed state, right? So first, inclusive. And Aparna, your voice is... What is exclusion? Yeah. Only then I will be able to do this. If you did as part of now, now, yeah, yeah, hello. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, we 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 were we are able to hear I, you now. We just lost you for a few seconds. So, okay, I just want to repeat. It, it's important to know what is being excluded. Where am I being excluded? To mm. understand what is what is. I think we heard Aparna, and she's left. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, food for thought. So we will. Uh, Aparna, we are losing you, but we are also at the fag end of our session. So uh, so what I hear from Aparna, we are at the fag end of the session and we are losing you in between. So thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your insights. I think you have left us thinking and it's, it's, uh, it's very good to hear from a different perspective. We've heard about corporate, we've heard about what's happening at that level, but understanding what marginalization is and how it is multidimensional uh, how is this structure getting created? How do people feel marginalized? And the example that you gave is so beautiful, where the education is not just for the woman or the gender, but also for the families, so that they become more accepting of women moving forward and doing their bit and contributing to the economy and country. So thank you so much for your insights. And thank you for the work that you're doing in a different space of uh, of empowering and bringing it to the to the uh, people at the grassroots level. So thank you so much. And with that, I will hand it over to Meena to uh, wrap up this beautiful panel discussion for us, a round thank table you, for us. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Deepa. And thank you all the panelists for making time, uh, sharing your very valuable thoughts and perspectives. I'm sure each of us are going away a lot richer than where we came from this morning. 
so uh, have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day and a very happy weekend reflecting on many of the thoughts that we've gathered together thank you partho over to you shiva over to you thanks bhai yeah. uh, i i don't know about how how to actually react and i'll tell you why you know such things make me numb you know one one is that you know uh, feeling of an extreme level of happiness at what you people do yeah, that's one aspect but the, but the other other part that pains me always and will pain me always is the problem that you're trying to address all all these uh, fragments of you know things that you mentioned what meena mentioned at the beginning uh, and uh, aparna mentioned this straight away hit here okay and uh, yet i feel that you you guys are you know very valiantly putting up an effort but there is this entire community at large which somehow is not reacting to the extent happy things are there but are they more than the happy things is my question and i you know put this question across to everyone who are here and on my part i can only say that i can only do this much but i i will ensure that i do that yeah and to all of you you know you, you guys always re- remind me of this beautiful shloka that comes in chandi ya devi sarva bhuteshu shakti rupena samadhita namaste say namaste say namaste say namo namo thank you for being the power of the world thank you for making us feel pop god bless you all and over to uh, shiva uh, he'll uh, make a concluding state well, thanks patho and uh, uh, deepest gratitude to all the uh, amazing uh, speakers who have really taken time to share your thoughts and insights and experiences uh, you really learned a lot and i'm i'm sure that you know each one of us have learned a lot at the same time you know the audience hope you all know that uh, gwfm is a uh, global forum and we have uh, chapters all over the world and uh, today evening we have one event uh, uh pertaining to uh, ebia north america and latin america so today's uh, event has been a fantastic success and uh, with the great speakers and great thoughts and uh, amazing insights Thank you so much and uh, this is the uh, event happening uh, in the evening today you know we have any any if you like to join in for this event uh, as an audience you know feel free to uh, visit our social media and see the link and register and attend this so you will have a different perspective from uh, west and also you know from um, europe set up uh, the women leaders who want to share their uh, distinct uh, experiences and also the context so uh overall you know we have uh, planned very good number of uh, speakers uh, in this 2024 women leadership round table and i'm mean, so proud that yes, we are doing it year on year interestingly uh, we have one event uh, which has come up where uh, industry and academy conclave in this we're going to create a kind of collaboration with the uh, universities institutions and also with the industry where we will have some of the projects where um, industry can give some of the projects to the uh, institutions and also to the you know, universities where you know the faculties or students can come forward to solve industry problems and then ind- uh, and then companies problem or and it could be community problem we want to build this kind of you know employability and economic growth perspective how we can shake hands together and you know, create this possibility gwfm would want to create a platform to you know host this so that you know this can become a year on year uh, collaboration and also we'll be able to see some kind of tangible uh, patents and also copyrights and also you know, we're going to publish this to the global market saying that you know this is a problem this is a solution okay these are all the takeaways and best practices which they can implement it This is happening uh, uh, on uh, 30th of April. 
please register and join. Feel free to reach out to us if uh, any of you have anything. And uh, for this, we are forming a committee, executive committee, uh, where uh, if you are interested in adding value, please reach out to me at Parthu for this. And very interestingly, uh, we are the uh, in, we are coming out of it, the Women Leadership uh, Award 2024, which is coming up. You will hear from, uh, uh, you know, one of us, either, to, either from Pato or, you know, from me. And, and also you will see this on the social media uh, about uh, women leadership with multiple categories of their achievements. They can fill in their details. You know, we'll also have a jury team, you know, who will qualify them. And, and then we would felicitate an award, you know, in the event which is coming up uh, on 20th of April, that's when we want to felicitate. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, Patho, you would want to add anything? Yes, uh, 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 the only only thing that uh, you know I would like to add uh, and mention to all of you that anyone, anyone who wants to contribute in this challenge that we are taking in terms of building employability and employability uh, with honesty, building employability to actually make them work in our organizations, right? So as I said in the beginning, there are mindsets which block, but are we, uh, you know, broad-minded enough to go there and actually help them be suitable for us? I mean, we, we are creating an uh, you know, advisory board for that purpose to actually brainstorm and uh, determine some workable strategies so that that can be taken to institutions of higher education across the nation. And whosoever contributes, uh, GWFM will be extremely, extremely you know, grateful for that contribution. Please, please feel free to reach out to Shiva and me, and uh, let's let's talk about this. In this employability event, we are also trying to award uh, <coughs> best uh, institutions, and uh, this awards, uh, you know, thing. You know, whenever we mention awards, there are a lot of uh, negative uh, connotations that come to our mind. And we want the people to actually vet what the colleges send us, the universities send us. So who better than you? So join, uh, join, feel free to nominate yourself for the jury positions, for the advisory positions, so that we, when we go out and speak to the world, it's actually a very authentic, uh, statement that we make. And last but not the least, let me say that once again. We are deeply, deeply touched by the, you know, the time that you were able to snatch and give us that. Okay? Despite, I, I individually know what challenges you guys are facing. Okay? Uh, and uh, for that, I, I don't wear a hat, but I'm, I'm, you know, nothing. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you all. God bless you. All. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend.